the MPP has also indicated that they, they, they identified some errors in the, in, after perusing the provisional voters register. They've, they are going to submit those errors to the Electoral Commission and have them corrected. In fact, during the week, there was a court ruling in Kumasi, specifically this is the Mesha South constituency, where mm -hmm. some members of the MPP actually took an issue to court with respect to some votes, voters who were wrongly or illegally transferred. The court ruled that that process should be reversed, in fact. I don't know if you've seen that. Yes. And, um, and, and now the, this is an issue that has also triggered further conversation as to what could have been the extent of the errors that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. And that's why the NDC is convinced that they would want the Electoral Commission to consider a forensic audit. The EC responded to the NDC's petition. We'll put portions of that on the screen right now. But essentially, the Electoral Commission says that, one, they have the systems and structures. The IT system is robust to <laughs> identify all of this and correct them. And then also, uh, the period, even though they admit that they did not make the register available to you, the parties in good time, it, it, it was enough time for you to peruse it before the regis registration, that's the voter exhibition started. The exercise started on the 20th. The NDC, you say you got it on the 19th, the day before, 1 p.m. the day before. Then you had to do the work of identifying all of these errors. They say that they want you around the table to see the full extent of the errors that you have identified. But then again, Dr. Bosman Asari says that your errors have been corrected as, as well. Now, do these responses, as in this document by the Electoral Commission, satisfy you as a party? Um, I don't think that they do satisfy us. Um, I have not read the, the document that you have referred to. It's a nine-page. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, heard, I heard of it in the, in the media. I tried to search for it. Probably I should have asked you for it before coming here. Mm -hmm. You know, but you see, um, <clears throat> when you have a situation where the, you know, institution of state that is supposed to be a neutral arbiter in the conduct of elections in the country, that is supposed to adhere to the constitutional principles of probity, accountability, and transparency mm -hmm. is being dodgy when it's, it comes to the you know, execution of his own mandate, then we have cause to be worried. Because from the document that you have read, the EC has claimed that its IT system is robust. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of the robustness of the IT system, they are confident that nothing untoward has happened, all right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, you know, has happened can be easily, you know, I mean, uh, corrected using the IT system. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alfred, we have been here in this country when um, it was reported that someone in uh, Tamale South constituency took the ID cards, the voter ID cards, of, uh, you know, voters in Tamale South, 26 of them, mm -hmm. and virtually use that, okay, without their being present to transfer their votes to Puzga. How did they do that? A robust IT system should have prevented that from happening, given the fact that they were not present, given the fact that their biometrics were not taken, all right, mm -hmm. before the transfer was effected. Okay? Mm -hmm. But without the biometrics, and without them even knowing that they had, I mean, uh, uh, they were, uh, um, a transfer was being done behind their back, all right, these transfers were effected to Puzga. All right? Mm -hmm. Using the IT system, in fact, the Tamale South offender did not take the ID cards and go to Puzga to do it. They did it in Tamale. So there's an, I mean, an electronic footprint that shows that in Tamale South, these were, if, I mean, uh, affected, all right, and it was also, I mean, uh, allowed by the Puzga, you know, I mean, a uh, person. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. Even if the ID cards were taken to Puzga, right, it means that the 26 persons must have been in Puzga for, for a rope, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, for the transfer to be effected. Yeah. Because All right? they have to physically Would have been there, would have been physically present. And then the, I mean, uh, uh, um, the system allowed the transfer to take place, meaning that the system is not as robust as is being claimed. All right. Mm -hmm. It is thanks to the vigilance of the able, um, ele I mean, uh, election directorate personnel headed by the Honorable, uh, you know, Omani Buama, mm -hmm. you know, through their diligence, through their vigilance, that, you know, they detected that these violations have taken place, that these errors have been made. So if the evidence has been pre I mean, uh, presented to you, okay, and you have accepted that, the Ele Electoral Commission has not denied that the errors have occurred, right? Mm -hmm. The admission that the errors have occurred in and of themselves, that admission in and of itself, shows that the IT system is not robust, okay? The, the because that they, they admit they, that, they admit the, that the, the errors have occurred and that they have corrected the errors, okay? Now, if you look, I mean, uh, the Electoral Commission is supposed to be, I mean, it's independent under the Constitution, mm -hmm. all right? But as uh, Gbadegbe GSC said in Abu Ramadan um, and the report, I mean, Abu Ramadan and Attorney General, the Electoral Commission is independent, but is subject to the Constitution and the laws of this country. If you look at the, I mean, the, the CI 91, mm -hmm. that is a public, I mean, uh, elections, voter registration instrument, okay, 2016, CI 91. There is a mandatory provision to the effect that the provisional register should be given to each political party, registered political party. It is for no reason that the lawmaker Right. The, EC, the EC itself brought this instrument to Parliament in 2016. Mm -hmm. All right. And Parliament passed the instrument for them. It is for no reason that Parliament, you know, agreed or enacted a law that says that you have to give a copy of the provisional register to the political parties. The photo, I mean, the uh, uh, provisional register is not a photo album meant to be given to them for them to just... I mean, look at beautiful pictures of registered voters. It is meant to be given to them so that they can look in, I mean, having participated in the process of registration, mm -hmm. they can, you know, uh, peruse the register and carefully, you know, detect, if possible, all right, any mistakes that have been made with respect to the register. And that is what the NDC is doing. And you have already, I mean, as you, you have already also cited the case of the Manchia South you know, issue, all right, that I think over a thousand uh, transfers were challenged and they were, I mean, they were, they were successful. So it means that there are concrete, you know, I mean, uh, issues with the voter register as we have it now, all right? Mm -hmm. So if we are calling for a forensic audit, there's nothing wrong with that. And well, the, in fact, the Electoral Commission says there's really no need for it because their systems and structures now can is doing the work. No, they, but they have correcting. they haven't demonstrated that, you know, to uh, the NDC and to the I mean all the political parties and to the citizens of this country. In fact, sure they are supposed to count. I mean, account to the citizens of this country for the work that they do. All right. So if there are concerns, okay. For instance, how do I know that on election day? I am not going to wake up only to find that my name is in Adenta and not in Zorungu. How, mm. I mean, I need to be sure that there will not be any displacement of my name, all right, from Zorungu to Adenta. So as a citizen, I should be concerned that these things are happening. And the Electoral Commission has to assure me that the, the register if satisfied, certified, because the, I mean, under C, I mean, uh, CI 91, all right, as amended by CI 126, mm -hmm. okay, the certification process, okay, mm -hmm. means, means that at the end of certification, you cannot raise an issue again about deficiencies in the register.
that is a register that will not head us into the election. Mm -hmm. All right. So at this level where the provisional register is being contested, it is only fair to all stakeholders and to the citizens of this country that the Electoral Commission should do the right thing, okay, by allowing for a forensic audit to take place. In any case, the same um, uh, Madam Jean Mensa, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, whilst in, I mean, uh, at IE, mm -hmm. when the MPP was calling for a forensic audit, I think around 20, late 2015, I mean, early 2016, all right, she supported that call. Is it because it was someone else who was on the seat that she thought that the person wasn't doing a good job and therefore there was, there was no robust IT system and therefore there was a need for a forensic audit? That forensic audit took place. In fact, even after it took place, there, were still, there was still litigation and that is how come Abu Ramadan number no. 1 and Abu Ramadan number no. 2 took place in the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court ordered the Electoral Commission, then headed by the, Madam uh, Charlotte Osei, all right, to delete, expunge a number of names, you know, of persons who were identified as either, you know, I mean, a dead or underage or not quali otherwise qualified to register. Okay, and that was done. So, in the interest of transparency, it is only fair that they accept with humility, okay, that they have not done a very good job with the registration. That the system as they have it, the IT system that as they have it, has been breached as evidence in the Puska, I mean, uh, 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 issue that I have raised. And then also by the, I mean, the evidence of, you know, the, the, um, the evidence that was presented by the, I mean, by the NDC to them. Okay. You are asking to have access to their uh, IT protocols to know who gets in, into the system, who has access into the system, and, and through which back end and so on. They also say that that's really not necessary. No, right no, now. no. It, it, it's, necessary, it's necessary because let me tell you something. Alfred, when the register is compiled, mm -hmm. it is compiled into something that looks like a, it's a booklet like this, right? And it is given to the political parties. The IT system contains the electronic version of this booklet. So if you give me the electronic version, if you give me the hard copy of the booklet, all right, and the, the hard copy is supposed to be, um, let's, let's, for want of a better expression, a carbon copy of the electronic version. And I'm telling you that, okay, you know, I could look at this book, book from the last page to the, I mean, uh, the, the first page. Right? When you talk about back end and front end, that is what it means. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, electronically, let me go in and then verify from the, the back end, okay, whether what is contained in the register, okay, is authentically reflected in what you have given me. Why is that a difficult thing to do? Why is that an invasion of the independence of the Electoral Commission? Because you are just simply complying with what the law has said. The Electoral Commission is an administrative, you know, I mean, a, a body. And under Article 23 of the Constitution, they are supposed to act in a fair and reasonable manner and to comply with all the requirements imposed on them by law. That is what Article, Article 21, I mean, it says. What does it mean to, to act fairly? Okay? Acting fairly means that all stakeholders, right, you must take their concerns into account all right mm -hmm. you see there is a certain perception or let me say their conduct is giving rise to a certain perception okay whether rightly or wrongly they are being perceived as being in bed with the mpp and that is not good for their independence the chairperson and the commissioners must demonstrate that okay they are i mean independent neutral arbiters Okay, mm -hmm. and that they are, they are treating the NDC as fairly as they are treating the MPP. Okay. But it appears that now, because the MPP is not concerned about whatever is happening, okay, they don't, they don't, really, they don't really care. They, they, but let me say that if the N MPP begins to raise issues about this register, Jim Mensah will call, I mean, will ask for an audit to take place. Well, here's the general secretary of the party, Justin Fripo Kodia, indicating they've also seen errors yes. in the register. 
Take a look. We detected some errors in the register. Uh, some including dead people in the register and some people whose name has been, uh, has been transferred or some people who wanted to do transfers but has not been uh, effected. All these things are what we are planning to send to the Electoral Commission next week based on what we have detected. And we expect the Electoral Commission to use their internal mechanism to address all those issues. Well, so that's Justin Fibon, Korea. There. So she said they're also concerned, is it not? I mean, is, is this not an expression of concern that they have also identified the Well, but, but you see, it then buttresses, you know, the genuineness or legitimacy of the demands being made by the NDC. If the two major political parties, all right, um, you know, have come to the conclusion that there are errors on the register, then it means that the register, for all, to all intents and purposes, is not fit for purpose. Great, but it's the process of correction. The Electoral Commission stands by the position that they have the competence to correct these errors. You say that to the extent that you committed those errors yourself, you've admitted to some extent of the criminality right. in the case of the Pussyga situation, yeah. then you are not the same persons to correct these criminal acts. Yes. You want a forensic audit. Yeah. I think that's where the departure is. Yeah, but, but, but uh, Alfred, the forensic audit cannot be conducted <laughs> by the EC, right? Mm -hmm. By the EC itself. Does the EC have the capabilities to be able to conduct a forensic audit of its own register? It does not. You know, I, I have been in this game for, I would say, 12 years now, almost. In December, it will be 12 years. Mm -hmm. All right. I have dealt with the EC at all levels, from the constituency level to the regional level, all the way to the national level. They do not have the capabilities, technically, to conduct a forensic audit. And that is the only way by which we can say if the IT system has in any way been compromised, that may lead, you know, to illegal vote transfers and so on and so forth. Because look, I mean, this, uh, this is a very serious issue that, I mean, uh, can easily compromise the integrity of our democratic process. Okay? We can have a situation where, let's say, yeah, I mean, you have a marginal constituency. I'm just giving an example. Okay. A marginal constituency where um, usually the MPP or the NDC wins by, let's say, 1,000, um, I mean, votes. Mm -hmm. All right. All you need to do electronically is to move 3,000 votes, you know, of known MPP persons to that constituency or known NDC persons to that constituency. And you tilt the balance, I mean, in favor of the, of the party whose members have been transferred to that. Uh, that is electronic gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and that is a big, con a big concern for all of us. The, the, the will of the people must truly reflect what it is. That at the end of the day, when voters come out, and they queue in the sun or in the rain and then vote, okay? Their preference must be reflected. Not that you, you sit in the, in the office, in the comfort of your office, and basically transfer votes, you know, that will tilt the balance of power in favor of a candidate, okay? Who will not be the candidate, who would otherwise not have been the candidate for that constituency, mm -hmm. all right? right. And in, even in terms of the, 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 the presidential, Okay, let me just use the Pusga example, for instance. Mm -hmm. All right. So Pusga, you have uh, 26 people were sent from Tamale Saab. And you know that Ta Tamale Saab, uh, my junior brother, uh, the, the former leader, uh, Honorable uh, Harun Idrisu's uh, constituency, is predominantly NDC. Mm -hmm. NDC wins there by about 85, 90%, 90% mm -hmm. in every election. All right. So, I mean, on a balance of probabilities, these 26 voters would likely be NDC voters. What you are doing is to disenfranchise them by sending them to Pusga. Because on election day, right, they go to Tamale Sab, they go to their police station, and they, are not, they, are, they won't be able to vote. Now, Alfred, just multiply 26, okay, mm -hmm. by the number of polling stations. Though. Pardon? There's 38, actually. Yeah, 38. 38, yeah, 38 yeah, not 26. Oh, the, the, yeah. No, the is it? I thought it started, they started off with 26. No, so, it's actually 38. Okay, 38. Okay, so, so take 38 mm -hmm. and multiply the 38 by, let's say, 8,000 polling stations. Mm -hmm. All right? Presidentially, if they, are, if they even estimate that half of these polling stations, all right, are NDC 
uh, dominant polling stations, okay? You multiply 38, okay, by 4,000. How many do you get? Right? Mm -hmm. That is over 400,000. Yes. And that can tilt the presidential election in favor of, I mean, Baumia, very, very easily. So electronically, you can disenfranchise and win the election. Huh? That's what I call the electronic, electronic uh, gerrymandering. You basically right. disenfranchise voters that you know will vote along a certain party line. And then make sure that once they are disenfranchised on that day, that party is going to lose over 400,000 votes. So I these see. are very serious, major issues that the Electoral Commission should not be, I mean, uh, toying with. Well, there's, you asked for a re-exhibition of the register after the correction of these errors. They, right. they, will, they will do that electronically. They will do it online. Well, I mean, see, when I yeah. saw that, when I saw that, uh, Alfred, that's a very lovable, I mean, uh, 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 response to our demand. You know why? My, my constituency, Bulgaris, all right, is partly urban, I mean, partly peri-urban, I will even say urban, it's partly peri-urban, all right, and mostly rural. How many people have smartphones, tablets, or computers in Bulgaris to be able to go, I mean, and verify electronically, uh, you know, that, I mean, uh, their names are on the register. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if during the process of the physical, I mean, exhibition, errors were detected, and through the diligence of the NDC, we brought these errors to your attention. You are now telling us that you have corrected the errors, and you are now going to put it on the website for all citizens to go to the website to go and then, I mean, uh, uh, verify. I think that this is laughable, honestly. I said it will be at no cost to, 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 to the at, citizens. To, uh, at no cost to who? To the citizens. It says the commission provided the PV, uh, the provisional voters register. These are the responses. Um, which you had not indicated. <laughs> so you raised a question about no the, the yes. for instance, the smartphone or internet penetration and right. so on, or even the smartphone penetration. Right. Not necessarily, well, they said they're going to use a, a USSR. So USSD, I beg your pardon, USSD code, which would not necessarily have you to use a smartphone for that, for that matter. Oh, but, uh, I mean, see, but, 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 but again, I mean, even even if you are talking about ordinary phones, mm -hmm. what is the no, level I, of I, penetration? I, I, and, and, right, and, and then also the I mean, literacy the, yes. of it. Yes. Right, and so the the point is that there's a major stakeholder that has identified the errors. Okay, if it will cost you maybe two million Ghana cities to hire, um, you know, a, I mean, a, a, an independent, you know, audit firm to do the forensic audit. How much is that compared to the damage that you can do to our democracy by not allowing this to happen? OK? okay. So I mean, the, the, the cost implication, the cost argument is not, I mean, a one that uh, is acceptable. OK. So it's the commission intends to implement an online exhibition of the PVR. That's what's on the screen. At no cost to registered voters. Voters will be able to report on anomalies with their details within a time frame to be made available to the public. The voters' <laughs> register will be displayed oh. online until election day. That's a response to you. So that so yeah. are they saying that on election day, if I find my name uh, not in the, uh, the register at my polling station, let's say I go online and I find that my name is in Accra, I will call Jim Mensah's office, and they will now get my name back to the uh, Zorungu Social Center uh, Catholic, you know, I mean, uh, uh, polling station A for me to go and cast my vote before the close of, uh, you know, of, uh, you know, <laughs> the, of the day. It's not, I mean, this is, these are very ridiculous, excuse my language, but they are very ridiculous responses to an otherwise serious issue.